Hey, hi all. In this video, we will be talking about the best practices we should follow while writing an Apex code in Salesforce. As we are aware of uh, Apex is the language which we use for the development in Salesforce. So let's start. So the first uh, use only one trigger per a subject. So why there should be only one trigger recommended for an a subject because Salesforce cannot guarantee you the order of execution of triggers if there are multiple triggers on a on an object. Salesforce cannot guarantee you like which trigger will run first and second. So that's why we should have only one trigger on an object. So let's see an example. So in this example, we have trigger on opportunity. The name of the trigger is opportunity trigger and then we have uh, trigger events like before insert after insert before update after update before delete after delete then we have some context variables like if the trigger is before then do some operation if trigger is in is insert then do some some of the operations so in that in this manner we can have a single trigger on an object and we can use all the trigger events and we can handle them using context variables benefit of using one trigger per object template is control order of execution so this pattern allows you to control the order of execution reusability, reusability. when you write your logic in apex classes then it can be reused outside of trigger as well because trigger is not dependent on the class or class is not dependent on trigger they are independent just we have we are calling a class when a particular trigger event has fired and then elegance this design pattern elevates the codes elegance organization and modularity second is avoid logic in the trigger your trigger should be logicless trigger should be logicless as to applying a good encapsulation style because they do not allow methods like regular classes therefore delegate the triggers to a regular class the class name is often called as trigger handler or helper class to avoid putting your logic in a trigger use a single trigger per object template and write a handler and helper class then let's see an example in step one we are writing a trigger on accounts so the name of the trigger is account trigger it is on account object we are uh, we are we have written all the trigger events after insert after in delete after update and then uh, we have created a class account hand account trigger handler and we are calling that class and passing the trigger dot new and trigger dot new map values from the trigger itself to that particular class there is a method in that particular class which we are calling and then we are passing that values and then we the custom logic which we want to use or which we want to build as per the user requirement or the business requirement that we are executing in the classes and then we are returning that value to the trigger and it is committed to the database third is avoid dml soql SOSL statements in loops so it's the generally it's the best practice like we have we, we are in a shared environment like we are working in cloud and there are different orgs or there are different organizations which are working on that particular um, cloud the same cloud so there are some limits to everything like uh, we can have uh, a number of dml in a particular transaction we can we can retrieve a number of records in soql in a particular transaction we can search for particular uh, records particular a number of records doing a sosl so to avoid hitting that limit we you have we have we have to avoid this uh, statements in the loop avoid using dml statement inside loops to avoid exceeding the dml governor limit instead try batching the data into a list and then just doing a single dml on that particular list 
database class methods dml operations sql queries sosl queries approval class methods email sending async scheduling or queuing within loops can cause governor limit exceptions instead try to batch up the data into a list and invoke invoke the operation once on that list of data outside the loop so basically we have to collect all the data in that loop and we have to do update delete any operation on that particular list which we have which which in which we have added the elements using the for loop so for an example we can see the, the trigger name is con contact trigger and it is on contact object the the trigger events are after insert after update so we are collecting the account ids and then we are just adding the account ids to one of the sets which we have created that is acc ids and in the map of id and account we are just retrieving all the accounts from that account id set and then in the for loop we are trying to update acc that is that particular account but in this case if we have more than 150 accounts then the loop will execute 150 times the update operation will execute 150 times and it will hit the limit when 151 record of the account will be there it will hit the governor limits so, so, so the best practice is to get all the accounts which we want to update in a particular list and just pass that list to that update operation of team so we will just see the example the below example demonstrates how to write dml outside of a for loop so the trigger name is contract uh, contact trigger we are collecting the account ids then we are just created a list that is a list of account account list to to update and then we are get, we are updating all the accounts have contact field we are setting it to true and we are adding the all that account all that accounts in that particular list account list to update and then we are checking the size of that list and then just we are doing one dml statement so in this case all the accounts will be updated if they are more than 150 also because we are using a single dml statement we are not using multiple dml statements because it's outside the for loop so that's why uh, that's why it's the best practice to use dml operations outside loops so sl and so ql also next is bulkify your apex code logic if you are in salesforce or if you are working in salesforce development or any configuration thing it is always mentioned that your code or your configuration should support the bulkification if there is a bulk set of data records to be updated then your code or your flow should not be failed so you can means like oh, if we if we are getting only one record and we are updating that particular record and again we are getting another record or we are checking any location in the list of that particular data set in that case we will be working on a single record it will not be a bulky vacation. so let's see an example so in this you can see like we have account trigger on account then we are only collecting the first account that is by using trigger.new and uh, in the square bracket we have zeroth location account we will be covering in this particular line and then we are working on that particular zeroth location account we are not working on whole set so this is not a bulkified code so how the bulkified code will look like in the below screenshot you can see we have account trigger on account before uh, the events are before insert before update for account uh, we are collecting all the new records as object records that that is in trigger.new list then we are just checking that if okay fine if the account name contains test then all the account name which contains test should be updated with bad 
and the account name so when we are using this for loop so we are iterating on each and every value in that particular list so this is a bulkified code and this is the best practice to follow while writing the code in salesforce or in epics if this avoid hard coding ids we cannot hard code ids like uh, in sql we have like select id from account where id is equal to we are hard, hard we are hard coding some of uh, we are hard coding any particular account id if you want to search particular account so it's not the best practice to hard code the values for an example you can see like uh, in this we are hard coding the record type id of opportunity and uh, that's not the best practice to follow or that that's not the good way to write a uh, code and the best way is to use the schema object for collecting the record type ids in some cases uh, then if you are aware of like how to get the record id from schema or frame from other class or standard class which is given in the salesforce uh, then it's fine otherwise you can search for that and accordingly you can get the data but don't hard code the values because they may vary from org to org and in your deployments it will be a bit of a task to every time change that class and it's not recommended because once it's in the production you cannot change that class that's why it's not recommended and it's not the best practice to follow and uh, yeah that's all for the best practices to follow and thank you have a nice day